Hello and welcome to CFP Board's What to Expect from the CFP Remote Testing Exam Experience webinar, where we share information related to the exam day experience so you feel comfortable and ready to take the CFP exam. My name is I.B. Lai Ojo and I am the Director of Examinations at CFP Board. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, CFP board will be adding a remote proctoring option for the upcoming CFP exam. Today, we will review the important topics such as the exam registration and scheduling process, what to expect on exam day when testing remotely, including the check-in process and the exam. Please note that you can submit questions throughout this webinar by using the chat feature. I will answer questions as soon as the formal presentation ends. The webinar will also be recorded and posted on our website within one week. The remote testing option is available only to candidates who are eligible based on location or health criteria. This includes candidates who need to travel more than 50 miles to get to a prometric test center or candidates who have an eligible health reason. In order to participate in remote proctoring, candidates must meet the minimum technology requirements that will be described shortly. You can apply for remote testing by following the four step process. Log in to your CFP board account. Two, complete the registration for the September 2020 exam. Three, download the remote testing application form from CFP board's website and submit the application by email to examinations at cfpboard.org. Four, receive the approval confirmation for remote testing within five business days. Please note that calling to check up on the request will not speed up the approval process. We strongly encourage you to register as soon as possible in the exam registration window so that you may obtain your preferred exam date and time. Please note that your coursework completion and verification with CFP board is not needed in order to schedule your exam with Prometric. Candidates must use a computer to complete the CFP exam through Prometric's ProProctor application. Hybrid tablet or laptop devices such as the Microsoft Surface are not compatible with the ProProctor application. Before applying to take the CFP exam remotely, you are advised to run a system readiness check. The results will help you to determine if your system meets the minimum technology requirements and if your operating system is compatible to install and run the ProProctor application. The system check can be conducted at any time on the Prometric website. Please note that you need a computer with screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 for the CFP exam to display correctly. The ProProctor system check only verifies a standard resolution of 1024 by 768. However, you will need a computer with screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 for the CFP exam. Now I will review some of the do's and don'ts of remote testing. Candidates are expected to test alone for the entire duration of the exam and stay in view of the camera. Please plan to have no interruptions in the testing room. Candidates are expected to take the exam in a clearly lit room, orderly and well lit. Please clear the testing area before the test to facilitate the check-in process. Candidates are expected to sit in an upright position during the examination. Please note that the desktop or laptop must be on a table or desk throughout the duration of the examination. Candidates are expected to sit in a chair during the examination, sitting or reclining in a bed or couch with the computer on your lap is not allowed. The examination must be taken in a well-lit room. Testing in a poorly lit room or workspace is not allowed. 
Testing in a cluttered or crowded room or workspace is not allowed. Persons or pets are not allowed in the testing room or area throughout the duration of the exam. Candidates are not allowed to use a dual monitor configuration to take the CFP exam. The computer must be undocked throughout the duration of the exam. We will now briefly discuss what you should expect to encounter on exam day. Candidates are encouraged to log in 30 minutes before the exam time to begin the check-in process. During the check-in process, the following self-service steps will occur. First, the Prometric ProProctor system will prompt you to capture your image by old, by in front, with the web camera. The system will also prompt you to capture an image of your government-issued ID by holding up the ID to the camera. Third, the system will prompt you to read a checklist to ensure the following is in place before the meeting with a readiness agent. Number one, a clean workspace. Number two, that your environment is suitable for testing. Thirdly, that your environment, your clothing and devices are compliant with the security requirements. We encourage candidates to prep their remote testing area well in advance of the testing appointments to ensure a smooth check-in process. Then you will meet with a Prometric Readiness Agent who will guide you through the three security checks before launching your exam. The first check is the ID verification. Your readiness agent will confirm your name, your address, and exam details via the video chat. Secondly, you will conduct the 360 degrees environmental check. Your readiness agent will ask you to provide a 360 degree view of your environment using your webcam. Your agent will also ask you to scan your work surface using your webcam. We strongly encourage having a medium to large mirror during your environmental check. During this step, your readiness agents will ask to inspect things such as bookshelves, wall hangings, electronic devices such as television. It is recommended to have a large bed sheet or linen available if you have to cover any area for clutter. It's important that you do not have your laptop connected to a docking station at any time during the setup of your exam. This can cause connectivity issues. Make sure to clear your workspace and put away all personal items. Finally, you will conduct a candidate person check. During the candidate person check, your readiness agent will ask you to stand up to do a scan of your person. This scan will include, but is not limited to, conducting a sleeve, pocket, and glasses check. Additionally, you'll be asked to turn all pockets inside out. Please remove large jewelry items from your person prior to and throughout the duration of the exam. It's important to note that in order to expedite the checking process, please remember to empty your pockets prior to the visual check. You are allowed to bring a calculator and lose batteries to your exam appointment. I will go over our calculator policy shortly, but we recommend reviewing the policy on your own prior to arriving on exam day. Formula sheets and tax tables will be provided on screen. Printed copies will not be allowed in the testing room. It is important to note that food and water are not allowed in the testing room. You will be able to access your water bottle during scheduled or unscheduled breaks. The following items are also not allowed in the testing room. Electronic devices, personal headphones, noise canceling headphones, hair plugs, outerwear, jewelry, hats, food, drinks, purses, bags or briefcases, notebooks, watches, cell phones, or any other wearable technology. Candidates are prohibited from using scratch paper or erasable white 
boards during the exam. Instead, a virtual scratch pad will be provided for note taking during the exam. These calculators, mix and models are only the only pre-approved calculators for use on the CFB exam. Newer or older versions of the pre-approved calculators will be allowed into the testing room. Cell phones or other electronic devices with calculator capabilities are not permitted. You are allowed to bring multiple calculators into the testing room if they are on our approved list. Basic function calculators are permitted into the testing room as well. Please note that you are required to reset the calculator's memory prior to entering the testing room. This is not to be done by the proctor. The proctor will review your calculator to ensure that it meets the CFE board standard and that the memory is clear. It is your responsibility to revert your calculator to the desired settings after the exam. It is strongly recommended that you become very familiar with your calculator prior to exam day to ensure that you are well-versed in reverting your calculator to your desired settings. You may bring loose batteries into the testing area. Please remove any packaging from the batteries as they will not be allowed if they're still in the original packaging. Calculators containing visible formulas must be covered. You will not be allowed to bring the calculator into the testing room if the formulas are visible on the reverse side of the calculator. You may cover up formulas with black electrical tape or by taping blank paper over the formulas. Your scheduled break will begin as soon as you submit your answers for section one. During your break, you may leave the testing room to obtain food, water, or whatever you need. Please be sure that you are back to your seat by the end of the 40 minute session as your exam will automatically begin as soon as the 40 minutes have expired. It is recommended that you return with enough time to complete the check-in process before the 40 minute break expires. You will also be allowed to leave the room during the unscheduled break to use the restroom or get a drink of water. You are not allowed to access your study materials during unscheduled breaks. Please be aware that during an unscheduled break, no additional time is provided and the same check-in process will be followed when you return. If you do need an unscheduled break, please raise your hand so that the proctor can check you out of the exam properly. If you encounter connectivity issues that adversely impact your examination, please report the issue to Prometric. And upon review and approval by CFP board, candidates may receive one opportunity to retake the exam remotely or at a test center. About a week after the exam administration, you will receive a candidate feedback survey from CFP board. This survey differs from the survey that you would have completed at the end of your testing appointment on exam day, and it is intended to capture all aspects of the exam, including the remote experience. We are always working to improve the exam experience for our candidates, and we appreciate your feedback. For additional information about remote proctoring, please review the CFP board remote testing policy and the remote proctoring FAQ page on the CFP board website. Now, I will pause for a moment to review and answer questions that were submitted during the webinar. We have a question about the Pacific time zones and the times being available being 6 a.m. or 2.30 p.m. or later. Um, we're working with our 
testing partner Prometric to make sure that more times are available in the Pacific time zone. Please note that you can also contact Prometric to schedule your exam on the phone or guest support by dialing 1-800-853-6764. This is a toll-free number in the US, US territories and Canada. The number again is 1-800-853-6764. We have another question about the check-in process. It says, will it be possible to practice the remote check-in process? Candidates are encouraged to clear their testing area in advance of the test to make sure that the, this process can be smooth when the readiness agent does interact with you. However, there is no formal practice or dry run of the remote check-in process. We provide all the information necessary about what to expect on the CFP remote proctoring FAQ page so that you can be well prepared. We have a question about this session and asking if it will be available to watch later. Yes, this session is being recorded and will be available about a week after the session. There's another question about using a wireless mouse and mouse pad if using a laptop. Yes, you can use a wireless mouse or mouse pad for the exam. Someone is asking, during the exam on the screen, does the scratch pad overlap the problems or answers? The virtual scratch pad is a floating scratch pad, meaning you can move it around as desired on the screen during your exam. There's another question about the scratch pad. Um, can I draw on eScratch pad? The scratch pad only supports typing functionality, so you will not be able to um, sketch or draw using the scratch pad. There's a question about is the webinar being recorded? Yes, the webinar is being recorded and will be made available about a week after the session. There's a question about the application, the remote proctoring application. Should we call if we have not heard back from CFP board within five days? The, we have processed batches, we processed applications in batches and you should receive feedback within five days of your application. If you have not received feedback, please send an email to examinations at cfpboard.org. There's a question about the photo capture on the ID. Do we just hold up our ID to the webcam or is there something else involved? The answer is to hold up the photo ID to the webcam and to do the screenshot. So you would see on your computer, it would show you the image that the webcam is capturing and you'll be able to adjust the ID to the webcam to get a clear picture and then you'll be able to take the photo capture yourself and then you can redo it if it's not clear. The same thing applies with the image capture. You'll be able to see yourself on screen as the webcam is capturing the image and you can adjust your position to the camera to make sure that there's a clear photo taken. We have a question about um, the eligibility for remote testing. Who is eligible for remote testing? Candidates who live more than, who have to drive about 50 miles to get to a Prometric test center are eligible for remote testing based on location criteria. And other candidates are also eligible based on the health criteria. Please download the remote testing application form on the CFP board website and submit to examinations at cfpboard.org. There's a question about the check-in process. Do we go through the same check-in process when we come back from our break? The answer is yes. You will go through the check-in process each time you leave the view of the camera for either the scheduled break or the unscheduled break. So for the 40-minute scheduled break, we would recommend that you return with enough time to go through the check-in process again and be seated at your desk by the time the 40 minute scheduled break expires so you can continue with your exam. 
Someone is asking, can your computer be plugged in to charge during the exam? Yes, your computer can be plugged in to charge. We actually recommend you plug in your computer to charge so that you do not run out of battery during the exam. Someone is asking, can you use two screens? The answer is no. You can only use one screen for the exam. Dual monitor configuration is not allowed for the exam. We have a question about the standing desk. Is it okay to use a standing desk? It's um, okay to use a standing desk. However, please consider that you would have to remain within the view of the camera all through the exam. So you can use a standing desk and change your mind and try to relocate to another desk. If you start with a um, standing desk, you have to at least go all the way to the break with the standing desk. There's a question about blank sheets of paper. Can we have blank sheets of paper for writing on? The answer is no. The virtual scratch pad will be provided on screen for note taking. There's a question about hardwire connection. Can we be hardwired to the internet for better connection? The answer is yes. Um, it's encouraged to be hardwired um, for the internet so that you can have a better connection. There's a question about if my computer has a built-in camera, do I still need an external webcam for the exam? If your computer has a built-in camera, you do not need an external webcam for the exam. There's a follow-up question about the webcam and any resolution requirements for the webcam. The resolution requirement for the webcam is 640 by 480p. Again, the resolution requirements for your webcam is 640 by 480p. And we discussed that earlier in the session as well, where I provided you with the system requirements for the different components of your computer. There's a follow-up question on the on using a regular paper. Can I can we request to use a regular paper for the remote test? Um, the answer is no. The virtual scratch pad will be made available on screen to all candidates. And this is one of the security features of the remote testing experience. There's a question about if a local test center opens up, can I still get a seat to test there? Yes. Um, if there is availability, by all means, you can still get a seat at the test center. Someone is asking if we can have a testing area inspected before the scheduled exam. Unfortunately, we cannot um, schedule a pre-inspection of your testing area before the exam. However, we provide all the information necessary to make sure that you have properly prepared your area for testing to ensure a smooth checking process. There's a follow-up question on the mini break. For the mini break, can you leave the view of the camera to use the restroom? Yes, candidates are allowed to leave the view of the camera during on scheduled breaks to use the restroom. However, on return, the checking process has to be repeated before you can continue with your exam. There's a question about the laptop. It says, may we use a laptop to show the proctor the surroundings and then turn off the laptop and switch to a desktop? Um, no, you, you have to do the environmental scan and the checking process with the same computer that you're going to use to take the exam. It is not allowed to start the checking process on one computer, in this case, a laptop, and then switch to a desktop. You have to start the checking process and take the exam on the same computer. We have one last question about the test center. If a local test center opens up, can I still get a seat to test there? The answer is yes. If there's space, there's availability at the test center, you can get um, a seat to test there. You would have to cancel your remote testing appointment if you already have an appointment scheduled and then reschedule at the local test center.